Okay, the target of this uh, talk is just to give overview of the ocean iron fertilization. Uh, what is the state of this uh, experiment that usually we carry out in the oceans? And the idea of the talk is open a debate, open a discussion, and share actually this discussion with all of you, because uh, scientists and also companies still uh, don't have clear if this uh, fertilization works. So many, many of millions of uh, dollars have been invested in the iron fertilization experiment just as tool to try to reduce the global warming. Just like a brief introduction, mentioned that uh, the raw material required for growth of marine for, uh, photosynthetic organisms are of course light, it's very simple. Nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and of course iron. And we need also CO2. So we have uh, excess of CO2 in the atmosphere. So the, if we can produce in a, a huge amount of phytoplankton, we can reduce uh, this CO2. Uh, this is the, the point, so it's pretty simple. But this is not, the conclusion are not very simple, and still we have uh, a lot of problem to interpret the results. So where we can do this, uh, where we can control the production of primary producers? We are in what part of the ocean? Well, there exist some uh, uh, areas with a uh, called high nitrate or high nutrient low chlorophyll area that has all these components, have nutrients, have light, of course CO2 in all part, but we don't have iron. So Martin and um, Fitzwater uh, in 1988 showed the iron limitation in the North Pacific Ocean. So from that, from the two decades, two, three decades, start the fertilization experiment that they call the Iron Age in oceanography. Well, what can we do? We go with the ship and we spill like a 10, 20, 30 tons of uh, iron. And we try to control all the uh, processes that happen after the iron addition. So after that, we carry out like a 10, about 10, is some, some other that we don't have information of iron experiments in the ocean. Not all this in this area, that is high nutrient low chlorophyll in the North Pacific and most of them in the Antarctic. So some conclusion about this in general. Okay? They are, every experiment has conclusion, but it's our, uh, specific for each uh, uh, addition experiment. But in general, we know that the, the addition of iron increased the phytoplankton biomass and the primary production. That is simple. Martin in 1988, take a bottle of water, add iron, and create a bloom inside the, the, the bottle. So we can check that this is true in all experiment. Exist line limitation in some part of the, of the ocean. And also when you add iron, you move from one species of phytoplankton, that is the items, growth in this condition, and move another species that also are really important. So when you add iron, you are not growing all species. So the, uh, reducing, uh, the reducing of CO2 is not is no as clear as uh, at the beginning the people suppose. And most of the P of CO2, uh, the particular organic carbon in the mixing layer is remineralized. So bacteria is using this uh, uh, carbon that uh, phytoplankton uh, uh, make to, uh, uh, including in the cycle of uh, macrobiology. So this carbon that you supposedly you have using from the CO2 to generate uh, uh, organic matter for phytoplankton is not going to the deep ocean. So it's using for uh, uh, bacteria. And another aspect that still is in the air is that the coccolithophore, that is our, another important species, is no iron limited. And the iron addition, you add a lot of tons of iron and you don't know exactly what is the effect of iron chemistry in the ocean, in this part, at least in this part of the ocean. And also because this campaign is a short time, it's like a one month, two months, no more, because you cannot stay more in the, on the sea, just be bureaucratic or just because it's a lot of money. Uh, many other aspects are still unknown like uh, that the effect of the atmospheric deposition or the zooplankton effect. And exists another parameter that is still 
One that the phytoplankton consumes the iron, another parameter is are limiting in this part. That, for example, vitamin B12. This was the last uh, iron fertilization. We participated in this one. And this, uh, the, the objective of this one is, okay, let's go to the last one, and we are gonna say if the iron fertilization works or not. We couldn't. So this uh, uh, Indian-German iron fertilization experiment that was carried out from January 7 to March uh, 17 from 2009. And we spilled like a 10, 20 ton of iron in the ocean. In this part of the ocean, it was in the South Atlantic and not in the, in the Antarctic. It was in the middle of, from the uh, Arctic and the, and the Atlantic. So the conclusion for this uh, experiment was that zooplankton is coming and this phytoplankton that you produce when you add the iron, the zooplankton is eating this uh, uh, phytoplankton. So after the, this uh, 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 iron addition experiment, we didn't do that. Because one month after the addition, we leave into the, to the port to study with another our project. But in this campaign that was almost three months, we know how the zooplankton is coming one month after the iron addition is, is eating all this uh, phytoplankton. And also, we know now that another element is limiting after iron. And this, the second one is cobalt. The concentration is cobalt is really, really low. It's not as low as iron, but it's really low. And what happened? You add iron, you add iron even here, you add iron even here, and the two species that grow in this part of the ocean, that is Emiliana and uh, Feosiste, is down. What happened? Cobalt is also decreasing. So when you add iron, you grow phytoplankton, but phytoplankton is using another element in the column water. It's not only iron. They need cobalt for vitamin B12, for example. So they're using iron and also using another element. Once that you add iron, they need another element. In this case, it's cobalt. So what's supposed what we have to do? Add cobalt now? Well, we are talking about that. So general question. We all say fertilization works. Is ocean fertilization really a viable way to slow down the global warming? And what happened with the geoengineering uh, plants? Are that? So another important point is the, the company that used this experiment to generate credit to sell to the countries. That is really important. And this creates some confusion in the journalists and also in the people in general. So this was the, some example of the information that generated during the ocean, uh, 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 the last one, that the Leoch effect, and some uh, title like uh, uh, UN says no, but climate hackers say yes, we are the climate hackers. So maybe we have some problem with the journalists and with the, also with the scientists because we don't have clear enough with uh, everybody. And we, maybe we, we cannot explain so clear as we know all this information. Another example is this, fertilization of the ocean with iron and or el rompehielos por arte siembra de hierro el océano. That's not true, but well. So we have many, many people that are agree with this iron fertilization and many, many people that absolutely not. Maybe we have to study another part, another part of the ocean that is the natural island fertilization, that is in the same uh, uh, level of the fertilization that we propose. This one, has, for example, in the Antarctic, the krill, I'm going to explain briefly, the hydrothermal vent and the iceberg, the own iceberg. Krill is the most abundant animal on the earth, and this is the most, together with salp, the most abundant in the Antarctic. So we demonstrate that this, this uh, 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 animal it's overfeeding all the time, tons and tons of elements is sailing, uh, uh, swimming in the, in, the, in the ocean, in this part of the Antarctic. It's overfeeding, and all the food is, is passing through the stomach, are releasing huge amount of iron, huge amount. We make some calculation, and I'm gonna show you now, that this amount of iron is equivalent to the, all the iron that release the rivers on the world, if you compare. So maybe we have, we need to address or reforce in this kind of uh, natural process and not adding iron. 
hydrothermal vents, all the vol volcano uh, activity in the, in the uh, seafloor release huge amount of iron. We don't have a number for this, but we know that, uh, a lot of uh, this activity is still uh, for this cover. And also the iceberg. We have uh, in, the, in the last uh, campaign where we made in the Antarctic, we see a piece of iceberg like a Santander, the, the size of Santander with a lot of iron. So when this, ice, uh, this iceberg is melting, it's releasing iron. And after this uh, path uh, from one uh, uh, area, is creating a bloom because it's releasing. The same with the krill, the same with the geothermal bend, and also the same, exactly the same with the iceberg. So, what we do? What do you think? That is an open debate, it's an open uh, uh, discussion that still scientists and governments and even the hackers, uh, we don't know exactly what to do. So, thank you very much.